Welcome to the Farm and Home Show. My name is Colby Dye, and today we are visiting with Dr. Chris Matoka. He's in the Department of Plant and Soil Sciences up at the University of Kentucky. For somebody that really doesn't really know all the things about soil, uh, kind of what is what is really important about soil that maybe we take for granted? Well, uh, some important things of soil that, that we do take for granted include uh, the fact that it provides food. Estimates uh, are about 99% of the food supply comes from the land. Um, with about 1% from the oceans, but one could argue that the uh, soil provides nutrients to fish and other aquatic life uh, as things move off into, into sediments and whatnot. And then uh, fiber as well. I grew up on a cotton farm in, in South Texas. And so of course, cotton is a important staple and uh, provides other sorts of fiber there. And then the other the other issue is it's a nice filter, uh, helps filter water supplies uh, to prevent uh, pollution into our groundwaters and, and surface waters almost all of our food comes from here. And and a lot of people maybe just think that when you go to buy it to the grocery store, you really don't know the whole process it took, but it really starts with the soil and the nutrients of the soil and how it's composed play a, a key role in how nutritious that food is when we consume it. Correct. Uh, good point, uh, Colby. So it uh, provides physical support so that roots can be anchored. But as you said, the nutrients, uh, that's an important step as it can supply nutrients to plants, um, both those uh, important grains and, 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 and cereals we think about, corn, wheat, uh, rice, for example, uh, but then even uh, supply nutrients to uh, forages, which then are uh, consumed by uh, beef cow, for example, and other, other animals. And so uh, supplying nutrients, that's a big one. And uh, then water. <laughs> Plants have to have water to, to grow. And I think the other less appreciated thing about the importance of soils is just having a balance of ventilation, if you will. You you have to have uh, a good ability or or a good gaseous movement from the soil, oxygen coming in, uh, allowing plant roots to to respire, and then CO two being able to leave. So things can't be too packed down. You have to have some good porosity as well. So so nutrients good airflow, ventilation, if you will, and all those things figure in prominently to uh, optimizing crop production. And I know a lot of our farmers will probably know that when you apply fertilizer on, on the packages, we talk about nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, and those big key nutrients. But a lot of times, they'll, they'll, we're not putting atoms. We're not putting that specific element. We're putting these compounds. So can you kind of talk about how like those compounds, they kind of transition into being taken up in the plant to being used in their elemental forms? So nitrogen, for example, uh, plants take up nitrogen primarily as, say, ammonium and nitrate, and then those are taken up into the plant and, and eventually converted into protein that we uh, that we can then uh, benefit from when we consume uh, the plants. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, one thing I know a lot of times that we see, um, we do the soil samples here at the office and people bring it in. And a lot of times we, when we explain these things to them, you know, what, how to read the label and when, what these different things mean. Uh, can you kind of talk about the the big macronutrients maybe that a lot, a lot of people see on the package? But I know you, you mentioned nitrogen and kind of what it does, but I know each one of them kind of plays a specific role in getting the plant to its full mature form. Can you touch a little bit on those and what they do? Sure. Yeah, so uh, a typical fertilizer will have uh, three different important nutrients, as you said, nitrogen being the first number on that bag, if you will. Uh, second uh, would be phosphorus, and then the third would be potassium or NPK. And uh, plants need those in um, in, in quantities uh, to to optimize growth. And so when one you know one can do calculations and 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 follow what the University of Kentucky Regulatory Services, for example, what they recommend in terms of uh, rates uh, for things like nitrogen, oftentimes, uh, uh, at least if it's a larger scale operation, uh, drainage is 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 used as an indicator of rate. Phosphorus and potassium, there are some good soil tests out there where if you take your soil and and it gets tested, they can reference it to, uh, optimum values, and then prescribe a recommended soil test. I should point out that nitrogen, there's really no good soil test for it. And that's why there's a lot of research trying to better understand nitrogen cycling to to optimize it, to optimize plant growth, but then also not pollute the environment. Yeah. I know on our soil tests that we do with the university, they, they can't give you a value for the nitrogen because of all the factors, but they can give you a recommendation. I know that's one of the most important services that we provide with the extension service, but thanks for watching and have a great day.